objective for this lesson is to convert measures involving whole numbers and solve multi-step word problems. Here we're asked to solve 40 centimeters equaling how many meters? Which of those units is bigger? Right, meters is bigger. The relationship in between the two is that 100 centimeters equals 1 meter. So if 100 centimeters equals 1 meter, 40 centimeters has to equal, hmm, less than 1 meter for sure. Is it more or less than half a meter? Right. It's less than a half because a half of a meter would it be equal to 50 centimeters. Let's keep this in mind as we work through our problem. Let's rename these centimeters using meters. So we have 40 times 1 centimeter equaling blank meters. It takes 100 centimeters to make a meter. So one centimeter would be one hundredth of a meter. Looking at a tape diagram for this, we think about this. We have one meter which also equals how many centimeters again? 100, right? So we have one centimeter here, another centimeter here, another centimeter, and then we have a hundred total of them, where each of them was one centimeter in length. And then so for when we are looking at just one of these and one unit, we know that a hundred of those units equals one meter. So one unit, if we divide by a hundred and divide by a hundred is equal to one one hundredth of a meter. So that's one unit is that one centimeter equaling one hundredth of a meter. Now, I'm not looking at one unit here though, because I am looking at 40. And then so I am looking at, if I replace the one centimeter with the one hundredth, then I have 40 times one one hundredth which, when we multiply out, we get 40 over 100, and then we could put that into simplest form. 40 divided by 10 is 4, 100 divided by 10 is 10, and it looks like I can simplify that even further. 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. So 40 centimeters is equal to 2 fifths meters. Let's work through another problem. Here we have 10 inches equals how many feet? Notice again that we are going from a smaller unit to a larger unit, so we'll have less of the larger unit. We also know that the relationship in between inches and feet is that 12 inches equals one foot. If we draw a tape diagram for a foot, we have one foot and there would be 12 of these inches inside of a foot. Where each of those is one inch. So 10 of them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, 
ten of those inches. Right? Out of the hole. Remember, the hole was twelve inches. So we would have ten over twelve from our model. If we divide by two, we get five over six. So 10 inches equals 5 six of a foot. Each of those inches, each of those units was 1 twelfth. of a foot. So if we worked out our, our problem here, it would have been 10 times 1 inch equals blank foot. And we know that that inch is actually 1 twelfth of a foot. So it's 10 times 1 twelfth of a foot equaling blank feet. And just as before, that's 10 twelfths of a foot, which equals 5 six of a foot. So 10 inches equals 5 six of a foot. Dana sleeps for eight hours on Monday. For what fraction of a day did she sleep? What we need to be able to solve this problem is how many hours that are in a day. We know that a day is 24 hours. So 24 hours is equal to one day. This also means that one hour, if I divide by 24 on both sides, is equal to 1 24th of a day. Using this relationship, I can figure out how much 8 hours is worth of a day. 8 hours, that's 8 times 1 hour, is equal to a certain amount of days. And so that's 8 times... I have my relationship right here. So that's 1 24th of an hour, which will equal 8 over 24, which I can go ahead and simplify. 1 third of a day. So if Dana sleeps for 8 hours on Monday, she slept for 1 third of the day. So that 8 hours equals one-third of a day. Your turn to try. We have 10 ounces equaling how many pounds, and I will give you the relationship that 16 ounces does equal one pound. Pause that video. Go through your work. Alright, so if we know that one pound does equal 16 ounces, right? So that means that there are 16 ounces inside of that pound. And here I'm actually looking at 10 of them. So I'm looking at 10 of those ounces. Each of those pounds... was equal to 16 ounces, so each of these ounces is worth 1 16th of a pound, and I have 10 of them, and that's why it's 1 16th times 10. So that's the expression that I come up with if I look at it with my tape diagram. Our original problem here is 10 ounces, and then so I know it's going to be less than a pound. You may have used this approach where it is that you want 10 times 1 ounce, and we know that that ounce is equal to 1 16th of a pound. So we have 10 over 16. 
which we can simplify to 5 eighths. So 10 ounces is equal to 5 eighths pounds, or 5 eighths of a pound. Remember to simplify those fractions. Here we have one last problem. Remember the relationship is 1 foot is equal to 12 inches. This means that 1 inch is equal to 1 twelfth of a foot. Using this relationship, and let's think about this. Hey, this is 15 inches then, so actually our answer should be more than one foot. Using that same approach, we have 15 times one inch. And then, so that is 15 times one twelfth of a foot, which is equal to 15 twelfths of a foot, which we can simplify. 12 goes into 15 one whole time. And so that's 1 and 3 twelfths of a foot, and then we just simplify that fractional part of that mixed number to get 1 and 1 fourth foot. So 15 inches does equal 1 and a quarter feet. This actually makes sense in that, um, so this is how we can go ahead and think about these problems. And it all comes back to those relationships, those things that we know. And in this case, we're going from smaller units to larger units. And that's why it is that we have those fractional parts of those larger units equaling that smaller unit.